of serving our community. I believe that God puts a church in a community in order for it to serve the community. The community doesn't serve this church, the church serves the community. And I appreciate all of you that have given time um, to that particular effort. I believe that tomorrow night is gonna be a white flag night. No, tomorrow night's not white. Well, I was about to get a whole bunch of folk because you know, tomorrow is a day of service. Uh, tomorrow is a day of, y'all do know that, tomorrow is a day of service. Every, at, when, when Martin Luther King's birthday comes along, we look at it as a day of service, serving our community, uh, all right? But our shelter won't be open, okay, that we know of as of yet, okay? But, um, you know, find a way to serve your community. Find a way to help somebody. Find a way to do something nice for somebody. Um, you'll find out that the Bible is right, that whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And when you do something, I, I was thinking about this and, and how it relates to yesterday in our, in our class concerning worship yesterday, we were talking about that true worshipers, um, I'm, I'm using this term because this, this is the way I'm said it, it's not the way I said it in class, but true worshipers are concerned about the community. A true worshiper is not someone just that puts their hands up in the sanctuary, but they put their hand out in the community to help somebody to to deal with what they're going through and so we as worshipers amen we want to be a part of that and helping somebody else and uh we appreciate all that you've done all that you're doing and we'll let you know uh, the next time but thank you all for volunteering well, some of you haven't volunteered yet um please if you can get in, get engaged in it get engaged in it um if you're doing nothing if you're doing nothing and you're not engaged in it at all please don't be the one in in uh around about june time talking about you know the church need to get outside the four walls and help somebody if you haven't helped us up in the now, we don't even want to receive that from you, okay? We only want to hear it, all right? Because we've been doing what God has called us to do, and we're, we're happy about it. Yesterday, I went to a, uh, I went to a uh, homegoing service of Pastor Preston Ross Sr., and uh, everywhere I went, people were thanking, thanking me because I'm the leader, but really thanking us because all of us are engaged in it. They were thanking us for what we are doing in the community, what we're doing in the community. And I think the applause goes to all of us, amen. So let's thank God for using us, amen, to do what we're doing. All right, let me get to the word of the Lord. Let me get to the word of the Lord and take a few moments to share the word of the Lord with you on today. So recently, so recently I started uh, thinking about the things that we should believe, the things that we should believe. Uh, what are those things that are indicative of what Christianity is and what Christianity believes? And, and so my thinking developed into this series that I'm preaching, which is called You Better Believe It. You Better um, Believe It. What we are doing is that we're taking a look at the core beliefs of our Christianity that we should have a clear understanding of, just in case we need to share it with either an unbeliever or someone who is wavering in the faith. I shared the scripture, didn't go to it, but I shared the scripture on last week how that the Bible tells us that we should always be ready to give somebody an answer for the hope that we have, for the reason why we do what we do. We should always be ready to give an answer about that. And there are unbelievers that want to know why you do what you do. There are unbelievers that want to know why you serve God, that why do you trust God, why do you read your Bible and all these other kind of things. And you have to have an answer of why you do what you do. And there are people, of course, that are wavering. They're not sure if what we're doing is real or unreal, whether it's true or untrue. And they come to church every week just like you come to church every week. And they need to know from you why you do what you do. So last week we started our conversation with the Word of God. We established the authority of the Word of God, how that the Word of God is inspired by God. The Word of God is inspired by God. We talk about that the Word is, is breathed by God, and therefore the Word of God is reliable. Can I get one amen right there? One that's, That was a good place to insert one. The Word of God is reliable. We can rely upon the Word of God. There are two primary Greek words, and I'm just telling you this so, you know, so I can sound like I'm educated. There are two primary Greek words uh, that are translated word in the New Testament. The first word is, is logos, logos. This word logos, L-O-G-O-S, refers principally to the total inspired word of God, the total inspired word of God, and Jesus, who is the living Logos. Jesus is the living Logos. So when you hear these big theologians on TV and they're talking about the Logos, okay, you can say that my pastor explained that to me, okay, because Jesus is the living Logos. He is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was 
God and it was with God. And so Jesus is that logos. He is the word of God. Anytime you encounter Jesus, you encounter the word of God. And so the Logos, again, it refers principally to the total inspired, the total inspired word of God and Jesus, who is the living Logos. So both Jesus and who is the living Logos and the total book are reliable sources for us to govern our lives by. We can govern our lives by the total book and we can govern our lives by Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. The second primary Greek word, just telling you this so you can, uh, you know, act like you educated when people bring it up is the word that is translated rima, rima, which is R-H-E-M-A, rima, which refers to a word that is spoken, a word that is spoken, or it means a utterance of the word of God. Really, really when you talk about a rima, a rima is a verse or a portion of scripture that the Holy Spirit uses to bring to our attention with the application to a current situation or, or, or something that we need direction in, God will give us a rhema word. He will give us a, if we will, uh, if, I, if I go back to the old church, a right now word um, concerning that particular thing that we deal with. So the easiest way uh, that I can explain this is that I use the logos, which is the total word of God, to present to you a rhema, which which is something particular that God wants you to know right now. Okay, did y'all get all that? So, so, so we, when, whenever you give somebody a word, what you're supposed to be giving them is a rhema word, which comes out of the logos, which comes out of the total word of God. But both of them, whether it is a logos, total, whether we're talking about the total word of God, or whether we're talking rhema, which is a right now word from God, they are both reliable, reliable. We can depend upon the word of God. And so the church has built its teaching and its faith on, on the reliability of scripture. That's what we are built upon. We are built upon the reliability of scripture. We cannot trust each other. As a matter of fact, we cannot even trust preachers. We cannot trust prophets. We cannot trust them because they are fallible. They are, they are capable of erring. They are capable of telling you something that is not from God. So therefore, the church has built this teaching in its faith on the reliability of scripture. Our faith is founded on the scriptures. What we teach, how we live, what we say, what we do comes and grows from the book. As I've been saying, we are people of the book. And so the authority of the word of God, as we talked about on last week, the authority of the word of God comes from the true God. It comes from the true God because he is the authority behind the book. Okay. I am not the authority. Neither are you the authority. The authority that comes from the word of God, it comes actually from God. You know this scripture, Numbers 23, 19. It says there, God is not a man. That's the first truth about God. That's, and, and I'm about to get to God in my teaching a little bit later on here. But God is not a man. That's the first thing. That he should lie. Remember I told you, you can't count on man. You can't count on preachers. Preachers will lie. Prophets will lie. Evangelists, I don't know. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. They will lie. But God is not a man. See, you got to understand why people lie. People lie in order to protect their character. People lie in order to defend themselves. People lie for various reasons. But God never has a reason to lie. So God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man. In other words, man did not bring God about. God, God, God was not brought into manifestation by man. We did not create the God that we serve. And see, that's the problem that I have with idol worshipers, by the way. Idol worshipers create a God to serve. We did not create the God that we serve. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Okay, and so therefore God is not a man. He's not a man that he should repent. Now repent means that he doesn't have to take back what he said. Because you know man, come on, let's, can I talk real quickly? Man will say something and then sooner or later they will have to take it back. Because they will tell you that I, I can do something and then find out they can't do for you what they said that they could do for you. And then they will have to take back their word. But that's not God. If God gives a word, God never has to repent of that word. He never has to take back what he says. 
Boy, I feel like being a preacher here today. So if God tells you he's going to heal you, he don't have to take it back. If God tells you he's going to bring you out, he does not have to take it back. If God tells you things are going to change, he does not have to take it back. Why? Because he's God and he's not man. So it begins to ask two questions in Numbers 23, 19. Two questions that it asks. Number one, it asks, has he said it? And shall he not do it? Has he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Now what, is, now, what is all that based upon? It's all based upon us knowing that God is not a man. So the answer to both questions are yes. Yes, he shall do it. Yes, he shall make it good. By the way, by the way, can I just skip to take a little side street? I'm going to take this side street and get back right on the main road. I just need to go around an accident real quickly. So you know what you ought to do every day that you wake up? You ought to every day that you wake up say, you know what? Yes, God is going to do it. Yes, God's going to make it good. There ought to be a yes in your spirit about the things that God speaks to you in your life you ought to wake up on Monday morning going yes he will do it yes he will make it good now let's get back on the main road now so so Romans 3 and 4 tells us let God be true and every man a liar let God be true and every man is a liar so God is true to his word look at somebody and tell them God is true to his word God is true to his word. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about the word of God. I want to talk a little bit more about the word of God. And our focus this morning is going to be on the power of the word, the power of the word. I got a lot of scriptures I'm going to share. I'm not going to preach too long, but I got a lot of scriptures I'm going to share. Because I think if you're going to talk about the word of God and you're going to talk about all these things that I, that I say you better believe, there better be some scripture to back up what I say. I mean, how are you going to tell me what I should believe? If the authority is the word of God, how is it now that you up here telling me all this stuff? That's why I got a problem with people that preach with no scripture. By the way, let me keep moving on. Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. We're going to be skipping around New Living King James, New Living King James. So kind of get both of them. If you got one of those, you know, you got one of those uh, uh, electronic devices, you might want to do the parallel thing. I don't know. But Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. We'll start in the New Living Translation here. Hebrews 4, verse number 12. Happy holidays to you all. Hebrews 4, verse number 12. New Living Translation. It is a holiday, right? Okay. All right. Thank you, Lord. All right. Hebrews 4, verse number 12, New Living Translation. Come on, Annette. Read that for me, please. For the word of God word is of God. alive and powerful. Read. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, uh -huh. cutting between soul and spirit, Yes. between joint and marrow. Uh -huh. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Everybody say amen. For the word of God is alive and powerful. Now, I'm not, not going to deal with the verse in its totality because if, it, if I did, it would, it would wave at me about so many different things. Okay, I'm really focusing in on this A clause of the verse which says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. Because I'm talking to you about the power of the word of God. The word of God is alive and the word of God is powerful. Here, the, the writer of Hebrews is telling, he's telling us that the logos, the total word of God, the total word of God is powerful. I wonder if I got anybody that can agree with that statement right there. Okay, good. The word of God is powerful. Now, this is such an exciting statement. I know that I've been in church most of my life, and I can remember when people started reading that verse, that how the church got excited, and we, we I mean, that's one of the verses you can dance off of right there when you start talking about how that the word of God is powerful. But, 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 but me being uh, uh, as analytical as I am at certain times about certain things, I, I begin to, to, to sit down and think about, Okay, the word of God is powerful, but what what does what what, what does that mean? You know, what, what has the word of God done or what is it doing that will verify that it is powerful? Because the statement in and of itself needs to be justified, it needs to be backed up by some things. And so 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 I, I know that you have probably been there as well. What has the word done that we can use to verify its power right right okay I'm glad that you asked them because but because that's exactly what I'm going to show you in looking at our many verses on today so I got I got some things I want to show first of all Hebrews 11 and 3 Hebrews 11 and 3 we're just going to talk about the power of the word of God we're going to go King James version on this one Hebrews 11 and 3 we're just going to talk about the power of the word of God some of this will excite you some of this you'll just go uh, okay. All right. So, but, but, but either way, it's still going to show you the power of the word of God. Hebrews 11, verse number three, King James Version. Come on. And that when, you, when you're there, drop that one on us real quickly. Through faith. Through faith. We understand uh -huh. that the worlds were framed the by the word of God. the worlds were framed by the word of God. Read. 
So that things which are seen, so that which things which are seen, were not made of things were which do appear. Were not made of things which do appear. Okay. Now, now, now the last part. Let me get to that last part before I get to the first part. The things which are seen are not made by things which do appear. In other words, this the worlds, the the, the galaxies, the, the the cosmos that is out there does not exist by anything that we see. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't exist by some rocks or all the other kind of stuff that may have banged together and all of a sudden there was a cosmos, there was a, a galaxy, there was a world. No, 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 no. The world that exists, the worlds that exist, that we understand that these worlds were framed by the word of God. It was framed by the word of God. The power of the word is seen because when God spoke in the beginning, matter had to come into being what was not had to show up when God spoke about it uh, okay I can't get no amens okay okay I have a I have a I have a uh, a commentary that I that I read on a regular I read it on a regular it's called the the believers Bible commentary the believer Bible commentary says this about the, the, what I'm talking about right now it, it, it says that man has discovered matter to be energy remember I said that that when God spoke in the beginning matter came into being so the commentary says man has discovered matter to be energy when God spoke there was a flow of energy in the form of sound waves when God spoke there was energy that was formed in the sound of uh, in the form of sound waves these were transformed into matter and the world sprang into existence so when God spoke I hope y'all catching what I'm saying when when God spoke his voice that the words left his mouth as sound waves and this these sound waves created energy and when this energy was created the world sprang into existence Lord have mercy here understand this please every time God speaks it creates energy oh my God every time God speaks it creates energy it creates a energy that will cause things to begin to occur because something has come up out of his mouth I wonder if there's anybody. No, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, calm down, Ernest. Calm down, Ernest. Calm down. Okay, thank you, thank you. Now, now, I, I begin to, I begin to, I, I, I was like, okay, Lord, now I'm discerning, I'm discerning why things begin to pick up when you begin to say things. Be, be, because, because every time God says something in my life, it is as if there is a, uh, an, I, I'm putting it in my words, okay? These are not theological words I'm going to say, but these are my words. There is, if, there is some strange energy. There's some strange sense of something just beginning to happen as soon as God says it. As soon as God, I can hear a word from God. It just seems like there is, there is something else that, uh, that, that, that accompanies that word that I, that I have never kind of been able to articulate what it is, but now I'm beginning to understand that it is the energy of of God. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. How do you know it's the energy of God? Well, remember when the Bible says this, that God will cause all things to work together for our good. When God begins to speak, God begins, oh my God, the energy of God begins to force things to shift in our lives into a different place in order for good to come out of our Lies. <laughs> Look at somebody say energy, energy. I, 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 see, you may not have the fulfillment, but what you have working on your behalf right now is energy. There are things that are moving. Okay, hold up, hold up. Okay, okay, bro, bro, preacher, you ain't explained it to me right yet. I, I ain't got it right. Okay, okay. And so, in the beginning. Uh, that the Bible tells us is that the word was the world was was without form and it was void but the spirit of the Lord moved uh -huh, energy moved upon the face of the waters when this energy was created what that energy connected to was when God said let there be and when God said let there be that spirit that was there hovering over the earth began to bring to pass everything that God 
everything that God said. So number one, here's my point number one, because I didn't mean to preach on it that long. Here's my point number one about, about the power of the word of God. The power of the word of God is that the word can create what has not existed. The word can create what has not existed. Again, Hebrews 11 and 3 says that, that we understand by faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God. What had not been now comes to pass because God speaks it. Okay, you may re you may remember um, um, Romans four and seventeen, the latter part of that verse, which says that God calls those things that be not as though they were. Okay, in other words, God will call something that is not there as if it has been there all the time. No, 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 you're missing what I'm saying. When, when it says that God calls those things that be not as though they were, it is saying that God is calling something like it was already there all the time. He is saying, uh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's saying, I know it's not there, but in my mind, it is there. Although you cannot see it, I see it because God is not a man. God is spirit. Spirit, and he's able to see it before it even comes to pass. <laughs> when, when, when the, the word of God, the power of the word, is that it can create what has not existed. He can create what has not existed. Now, 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 um, just, just, just as the word of testimony, I know y'all get tired of my little testimony because they're the same testimonies. I understand that. And, and that's how older people do. They testify the same thing that they always testify about. And so, and so I'm just like that. And so, so I, I'll tell you this. And I know you're tired of my testimony, but I'm going to tell it anyway because it's my testimony. And, and so I remember, when, I remember when I got out I got out of the military. I got out of the military. I served 12 years in the military. Thank you for your applause, but hold it right now. Okay, I got out. No, it's too late now. It's already, I'm past that moment. I served 12 years in the military. And when I got out of the military, when I got out of the military, I did not have a job. Now, not having a job is not a good thing if you're going to be married to Cynthia Jones. Praise Jesus. And so I did not have a job. But you know what I did? I went home and I watched TV and I didn't put in no applications, no way. I didn't do anything. You know why? Because there was a dude that told me, he says, I'm going to create a job for you. Now, this job did not exist. It was not in the system. Nobody, it, was, it was not there. And you know what? When he said that, you know what I felt? You have to forgive me. I felt like God was speaking to me. I hope you understand that God can speak to you through various people, places, and things. When he said that, there was something in my spirit that connected with what he said. I felt like that was God speaking to me. So I went home. I didn't put in no... I, by the way, this is not a lesson on how to get a job. This is my testimony. I don't want y'all going home and chilling out. Okay? All right. All right. This is my... Look at somebody say, this is his testimony. If you ain't got a job, go get a job. This is my testimony. And so, therefore, I sat at the house. I sat at the house. I chilled out. I, I was, you know, just hanging out. My wife looking at me, trying, trying to figure out what you're going to do. And I'm like, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. For three months, for three months, I had to wait on God. For three months, I had to wait on God. For three months, I had to wait on God. I wasn't, nothing was happening. Nothing was going on. I'm wondering myself now, you know, because sometimes you think, what's going on? But you know what? God spoke it, and energy was beginning to bring it to pass. God was working in people's hearts. He was dealing with people so that they can. They, they, now, now, you got to understand this. See, somebody had to write the position. They had to write the position and get the position approved in the system. And all this stuff had to go on in order for me to get my job. And so God just had energy going. He put energy in somebody's mind to write down the right words. Then he put energy in somebody else to say, that's the right stuff. He put energy in people. And this guy was a GM 13. And he was going to see people every day to find out where the job had. Let me tell you something. GM 13 ain't supposed to be working for me. I'm supposed to be working for him. But when God creates energy because he spoke a word over your life, the energy that he will create will cause men that are over you to submit themselves to the will of God for you. Lord have mercy. And so they created, they created a job for me because God spoke it. See, when God speaks, the power of the word of God is that God can create what has not existed. You got to rest assured of that. You got to know that. You got to understand that. You got to, oh, thank you, God, for the power of your word. Because there will be some time that God will tell you about something. You'll be like, I don't see it. Don't worry. God's word is going to create it. 
He is a creator. He is a creator. And so the power of the word of God is that God can create what has never existed. I need you to rest upon that and know that we as believers, we got to believe this. Okay, you have to believe this. God will create what has not existed for you, just for you, just for you. God will create something just for you. He'll open a door just for you. Nobody else got in that door before, but here you come. They be like, where you come from? No, God created this. Don't, 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 don't hate on me. Don't hate on me. Don't hate on me. God created this position for me. God created this door for me. God created this way out for me. God created this thing. for God created this for me. Because he spoke. I didn't know how we're going to do it. I didn't know when he was going to do it. I just knew the energy was working. Somebody right now need to give God praise for the energy that's working for you right now. Because God spoke something. There is energy in your... My God! Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I got to move on. I didn't, I didn't. These points were supposed to go like that. So, so the first... Oh, my God. Thank you. Okay, Lord, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. One more thing I'm going to say about this, and it, and it, and it lines up with what, what, I, what I talked about a couple of weeks ago on Saturday, and, and I just need to mention this. It, um, God says out of Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 43, 19. I may be, I may be mistaken because this ain't part of my message. I'm just trying to tell you what I hear the Lord saying in my spirit. He didn't tell me what the verse is, but, it, but he told me, I mean, but you know what, what it was, but it's, but it's in Isaiah. He says, behold, I do a new thing. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready. Behold, I do a new thing, saith the Lord. Have you not known it? Have you not seen it? It shall spring forth speedily. In other words, God says that when my words speak, it will create such a new thing in your life that it will happen so quick that you will not even understand how he did it so quick. Somebody ought to praise God for that right there. You ought to praise God for that right there. You ought to praise God for that right there. You ought to praise God for that right there. Look at somebody say, you better believe it. You better believe it. Don't y'all hijack my message. I'm trying to be a teacher. I'm trying to be a teacher. Y'all hijacking my message. Prophesy to somebody and say, God's get ready to create something for you. Bless you, please be seated. God bless you, please be seated. So, um, so, 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 Dr. Council, Dr. Council, so, 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 I, I, I had a, I, I had some, 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 in, 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 uh, some, some issues going on when I, when I started thinking about, okay, God, you get ready to do a new thing. But then your word says there's nothing new under the sun. So I was like, God, how you balance that out? He said, listen, that word for you, that ain't for me. See, you got to understand something. I am a creative God. There are things that are going on that you do not even understand and you don't even know how I work, how I do what I do when I do it. able to bring the past something out of nothing okay and he said hold up wait a minute he said hold up you got to know who wrote that Solomon wrote that at a time of, of, of frustration of trying to figure out what's really going on in life what's really happening with life and so he limited me to the fact that I cannot bring anything to pass but if you know I'm God able to make something come out of nothing. So I dare somebody to praise him if you know he can make something happen. So, so let me get the point too. 
Y'all really need to sit down, please. You better believe it and you better sit down. Come on. So. Just say, speak, Lord. Okay, be seated. Thank you very much. And sometimes, sometimes when you need God to create something, you just got to know how to wait on him and speak. Because when he speaks, energy begins to operate on your behalf he causes all things to work together for your good just because he said something just because he said something just because he said something things start happening just because he said something things start turning around just because he said something. Okay, be seated. And so I mentioned that. I, I, I mentioned that. Be seated. I, I mentioned that because, because, because I was thinking. I was thinking of, of of how many times, you know, people have responded to me, and it was like, well. It's just because you said something. I heard you. I heard you say something, and so I went into action because I heard you say something. Everything goes into action just because God says something. All right, all right. C can I at least get the point too? I, I, I got, I got seven of these. I got seven of these, y'all. Got seven of them. So the power of the word is that He can create what has not existed. Isaiah. Isaiah 55. I'm moving on. Isaiah 55. I don't know if I heard. I didn't. Isaiah 55. This, you, you better believe in the word. There's power in that word. But Lord, I don't see anything. Lord, I don't see how. Lord, I don't see nothing. Lord, there's nothing there. Lord, there's nothing there. Lord, there's nothing there. But you said it. And if you said it, you can create something. Your word is a creative word. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11, King James Version. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. I could, let me just get the point point two. Point two. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. Boy, I had no idea I'd be this long. <laughs> Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. I'm with all right. You. <laughs> I just uh, yes, want to make sure. Okay. Bird, read the book. Read you. the book. Read it then. Hallelujah. 10 and 11. For as the rain cometh down, with the rain coming down, and the snow from heaven, snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, and don't come back to, up there. Don't go back. Read. But watereth the earth, but it water, and make it bring forth and bud. It maketh. It maketh. It make. Yes. It makes yes. the earth bring forth and bud. Read. That it may give seed to the sower uh -huh. and bread to the eater. Read. So shall my word be. So shall my word be. Uh -huh. That goeth forth out of my mouth. That go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto it's me not void. Not return to me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. Uh -huh. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So my point number two, because I might not, I don't know if I can get to my little notes here. Um, my point number two is that the power of the word is that it accomplishes whatever God wants it to accomplish. 
Okay, the power of the word of God is that the word of God accomplishes whatever God wants it to accomplish. Only pick one part. I could have, man, all this stuff preaches in there. But the part that I picked out in, in, in verse 11 says, but it shall accomplish that which I please. So the power of the word is that it accomplishes whatever God wants it to accomplish. God's word never fails to accomplish God's purpose. Okay. Now I thought about that as it relates to my life. Amen. I, I grew up in church. I grew up in church, y'all. And and people prophesied thing about me. you. Anybody grew up in church know that you will be prophesied over. Okay. And so they prophesied some things over my life, and they spoke some things over my life as I grew up in church. Well, if it it, it I found out that it was the word of God, and the word of God accomplishes whatever God wants it to accomplish. By the way, I didn't want the word of God to do what they spoke over my life. I need you to hear this. No, 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 no. I need you to hear what I just now said. I didn't want what they were praying over me. I didn't want what they were speaking over me. I didn't want to be saved. I didn't want to be holy. I didn't want to be in the church. I didn't want to be no preacher. I didn't want to be none of that. I had my sight set on the world. But when God speaks a word, the word will accomplish whatever God wants it to accomplish. So you can go ahead and do what you want to do, but you're going to be whatever God called you to be. Because when God says it, it's got to come to pass. Y'all really don't want me to preach. Y'all really don't want me to preach. But listen to me. Can I talk to any, can I talk to some of you parents that have prophesied anything over your children and you knew it was a word of God, but they are not what you have spoken as of yet? Let me tell you something. Can I encourage your little fluttering heart on today? If what you spoke was the Rima word of God for their lives, it's going to accomplish what God said it's supposed to accomplish. So I don't care where they are right now. I don't care what state they're in right now. God will accomplish his word for their lives. Look at somebody and say, you better believe it. The word of God that goes out of my mouth, says God, it will not return unto me empty. Because the word of God is on assignment. Because listen to it. Listen to the last part of that verse. It shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Don't you know that word that gets to you is a word that God sends to you? I need you to think about that just for a second. The word that gets to you is the word that God sends you. I have to confess something. No, wait, 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 wait. Before I have to confess something, I'll say this. I'll say this. I was listening to a, a preacher on today, even as I was coming in early this morning. I listened to a preacher on today, and this is something that occurs to me a lot as a preacher as well. I'll be up preaching, and this guy said he was up preaching. He said after the service, somebody came up to them, to him, and said, listen, I appreciate what you said today because when you said such and such and so and so, that blessed my life. It was the thing that I needed to hear. When the preacher walked away from the conversation, he thought to himself, I didn't say none of that. That happens to be a lot, too. I preach and I preach and folk come up to me, boy, you, you blessed me when you said that part. I'll be saying, I didn't, I didn't say that. But there's something about when the word of God is being delivered that when the Lord has a word that he needs to send to you, I might be speaking in English, but you get a spiritual interpretation out of something that I said, and, and you come to me, and I don't, I don't even understand where you got it from, but then I do know where you got it from. When God has a word to get to you, he'll bring it by special delivery. Everything don't come in the regular mail. Some things come by special delivery. And there are times when God's got a word that's assigned to your life. Boy, you can be among everybody. 600 people hear one thing, but you heard something different. And you'd be like, did you just hear that? They'd be like, what are you talking about? Everybody heard it. No, did you just hear that? They'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean you just, what did I just? And you'd be like, God just told me he's about to turn something around. He said, no, that's not what the preacher said. The preacher said that God said something else. But he'd be like, no, God just told me he was going to turn something around. You know why? Baby, that's your special delivery. God sent it to you. You ought to thank God, everybody, right now for a special delivery. So the power of the word is that the word accomplishes whatever God sent it to accomplish. 
Well, how is that going to happen? By the power of the word. Power of the word. It's going to accomplish whatever God sent it to accomplish. Well, how are you going to become a preacher? And you don't like public speaking. The power of the word will accomplish whatever he set it out to accomplish. How am I going to do this job? I ain't qualified for it. The power of the word will cause you to accomplish whatever God has set you out to accomplish. Nobody's talking to me in here. That's the power of the word of God. It can take fragile, f afraid, scared people and make them mighty people in God. Why? It's the power of the word of God. That's how Jonah can become a Jonah and Moses can become a Moses and David can become a David and a Cynthia can become a Cynthia and an Eric can become an Eric. It's the power of the word of God. Don't be fooled, baby. We are operating on the word that's on our lives. Because you know we don't know some of the stuff that we say we know. You know we don't have the ability to do the, some of the stuff that we say that we can do. But the power of the word accomplishes what it sets out to accomplish. I used to be, uh, this is my last thing, I'm done, I think. I used to be, I used to be a minister of music in the church. Did y'all know that? I used to be a minister of music in the church. New Birth Jerusalem, Church of God in Christ. Yeah, Voki used to be there one time. She wasn't there when I was there, but she was there. Okay, I was the first, I was their first minister of music. I used to teach choirs, I used to teach them, teach them how to sing. I was writing songs, doing all this stuff. You know why I was doing it? Because God spoke that I have to do it. Okay, now, can I tell you something? I cannot sing soprano. Thank you very much. Some people know I can. I cannot sing soprano. But when I was teaching choirs, I was singing soprano. I was giving the sopranos their note. Well, how was you able to give sopranos their note with that deep voice that you got? God spoke the word that that was what I was supposed to be doing. And when God's word speaks, it will accomplish what God set it out to do. Now, that word for my life was a seasonal word. It was what God wanted to accomplish in that season of my life. If you put me in front of a choir today and tell me to teach them the voice, boy, you're gonna hear, they're going to sound like frogs on Sunday morning because that's no longer what God has over my life. God's word will accomplish whatever he desires for it to accomplish. And many times, you got to hear this part of it. You better make sure you work in the season of your word. No, 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 because I need you to hear what I'm getting ready to say. Because some of y'all are not working in what you know he said. You need to start working in what you know he says because it will accomplish what he set it out to do. Don't let your season pass you by. You got to make sure you're operating in the right season. And so the power of the word of God is that the word of God will accomplish whatever God sets it out to do. He said, listen, this is my word. It ain't going to return to me empty. It's on assignment. Your word is supposed to bring the report back to God that it happened. Yeah, it happened. You are what God says you're supposed to be. You're doing what God says you're supposed to do. Things are working the way God says they were supposed to work. Your word cannot leave you until it happens. By the way, that's why some of you got all this, dream, you dreaming stuff. You wonder why you can't shake the dreams. And then you got the nerve not to come to True Vine on one Sunday. You go to this little church, little storefront, and they find you. And they be like, hey, come here, you. Let me speak to you. And he'd be like, oh, God. And they'll speak the word over you. That's okay. I've been in church all my life, man. I know stuff like that. You know why? Because that word cannot leave you. It's on assignment. The word is, the word of God is your sponsor. The word of God is your sponsor. 
it sponsors you. When I, when I went to the military, the first time I went to Germany, they gave me a sponsor. This person was responsible for me to get me from, from where, where I was as a, as a, a wide-eyed private for the first time being out of the country of, of the United States. They were to get me acclimated to this new surrounding that I was in. And they were assigned to me until I became comfortable with where I was. The word of God is assigned to you and cannot leave you until you become comfortable in that place where God has assigned you. Until you're doing what God would have you to do. That's the power of the word. Can't, you can't shake it. Try the best you can. You ain't going to be able to shake it. The word of God is going to keep you. Stand with me power of the word I got five more to get to <laughs> when I started writing this this morning I said boy I'm gonna fly through these it's gonna be I blame some of y'all preachers never take blame <laughs> but listen to me the power of the word number one power of the word that I dealt with is that the power of the word is that it, it can create what has not existed if any of you here today need God to create something for you, because you've been trying, you've been trying, you've been trying, you've been trying. I'm a witness. God will create a job for you. I'm, I'm just a witness of that. I'm, I'm just a witness. That's just my thing. But other things as well. God can create for you. 